Happy Monday, Discovery Learners! It is I, Teacher Liz, here with another episode of Ability to Learn on the Discovery Day program. Today, I'll be sharing with you some cool observances, interesting history, cool facts, cool animals, and plants. And let's not forget, there's a new Spanish word to learn and a new place to explore this week. And also, don't forget to log in every day to the live Zoom sessions provided every day by the Discovery Educational Team. Now let's not delay any further, let's start the show. And now for today's observances. Our first observance is National Ice Cream Cake Day. National Ice Cream Cake Day brings two celebration favorites together under one delicious treat. And in the height of the summer, an ice cream cake creates the perfect dessert for just about any occasion. Ice cream cake makers build the treats out of any flavor of ice cream into a shape of a cake. And they add many different ingredients too. Whether you like cookie crumbs, sponge cake, fudge, fruit, or caramel between the layers, they make delicious things happen. Then they take it a step further with decorating. They begin adding frosting, whipped cream, or icing, just like baked cakes. Ice cream cakes are decorated to fit any theme or celebration. Although the origin of the ice cream cake remains somewhat of a mystery, there is no doubting that this popular dessert combines two classics between the classic summer treat, ice cream, and the time-honored celebratory cake. The ice cream cake becomes one of the culinary history's favorite combination. So how do you observe National Ice Cream Cake Day? Well, go to Baskin Robbins and order up an ice cream cake of your favorite flavor. It doesn't have to be somebody's birthday. It's summer. Have fun, enjoy, and treat yourself. Our next observance is National Paul Bunyan Day. On June 28th, we remember fondly the tales of the big blue ox and a mighty lumberjack. It is National Paul Bunyan Day. Described as a giant in a lumberjack of unusual skill, Paul Bunyan is one of the most famous North American folklore heroes. In tales, Paul Bunyan was almost always accompanied by his companion, Babe the giant blue ox. But was he real? First appearing in print in 1906, in a story published by Northern Michigan journalist James McGarvey, Bunyan's character originated in folk tales circulated among lumberjacks in the northeastern United States and eastern Canada. One account states that the tales began during the Panu Rebellion in 1837. In 1914, William Laugh had reworked the stories for locking companies' advertising campaign. The campaign breathed new life into the growing legendary character of Paul Bunyan. It was the 1922 edition of Laughhead's Tales that inspired many others and soon the character's plaid shirt and far-fetched characteristics spread across all of the United States and Canada. So how do we observe National Paul Bunyan Day? We'll go ahead and read one of several of Paul Bunyan's tales. And go ahead and share with us your adventures as you find the various statues dedicated to his folklore hero. Go ahead and comment down below and let us know how you plan on observing, well, these observances for today. On this day in history. Today, in 1992, two earthquakes including third strongest in U.S., reaching about 7.4, rocks the state of California. Two of the strongest earthquakes ever to hit California strike the desert area east of Los Angeles on June 28, 1992. Although the states sit upon immense San Andreas fault line, relatively few major earthquakes have hit California in modern times. Two of the strongest, but not the deadliest, hit Southern California on a single morning in the summer of 1992. 
Just before 5 a.m. on Sunday morning, a 7.3 magnitude earthquake struck in Landers, 100 miles east of Los Angeles. Because of Landers' area is sparsely populated, damage was relatively minor given the intensity of the jolt. In Los Angeles, the residents experienced rolling and shaking for nearly a minute. The tremors were also felt in Arizona, Las Vegas, and as far away as Boise, Idaho. Just over three hours later, a second 6.3 magnitude tremor hit Big Bear Lake, not too far from the original epicenter. The quake caused fires to break out, and the cost of three people their lives. A chimney fell on a three-year-old child, and two people suffered fatal heart attacks. Between the two earthquakes, 400 people were injured, and $92 million in damages were suffered. The physical damage was also significant. The quakes triggered landslides that wiped out roads and opened a 44-mile-long rupture in the earth, the biggest in California since the 1906 San Francisco quake. Now, I was pretty young when this earthquake happened, but I sure remember it. I definitely remember this earthquake. It was very scary, but just like any other earthquake, it will come and it will go just as quickly as it comes. What about you, Discovery Learners? Do you remember this earthquake? Go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. Go ahead and leave a comment below and let us know what you think of today's historical events. Notable figures born on this day. Our first notable figure born today is Mel Brooks. Born June 28, 1926, in New York City, New York. This legendary director of the classic satirical comedy such as Blazing Saddles, Young Frankenstein, Spaceballs, High Anxiety, The Producers, and Robin Hood, Men in Tights. He belongs to an exclusive club of entertainers as a recipient of an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and even Tony Awards. Before he was famous, as a teenager, he was taught the drums by the great Buddy Rich. In 1961, his comedy career took a big leap forward when he and fellow comedic legend Carl Rayner created a comedy sketch called 2,000 Year Old Men. He turns 95 years old today. Wow! Happy birthday, Mel Brooks! Our next notable figure born today is Pat Morita. Born June 28, 1932, in Iselton, California. This American actor is best well known for his Academy Award nominated performance as Mr. Miyagi in the Karate Kid franchise. He also appeared in Happy Days. Before he was famous, at the age of two, he contracted tuberculosis. He was initially told that he would never walk. Later, he entertained customers at his parents' restaurant with jokes. He unfortunately passed away November 24th of 2005 at the age of 73. But an interesting piece of trivia to know about him is that in 1976, he was cast as a lead in the TV series Mr. T and Tina and is considered the first Asian actor to serve as the lead actor in an American sitcom. Unfortunately, the show was canceled in the middle of its first season. Wow, pretty interesting. Happy birthday, Pat Morita. Another notable figure born today is Kathy Bates. Born June 28, 1948 in Memphis, Tennessee. This American actress whose films include About Schmidt, The Blind Side, Titanic, and The Late Ship. She received a massive fan base for her performance as a disturbed nurse in the film version of the Stephen King novel, Misery. She also plays Ethel Darling in FX's American Horror Story. Before she was famous, she joined a sorority at Southern Methodist University. She debuted in 1971 in the film Taking Off. She turns 73 years old today. Happy birthday, Kathy Bates. Another notable figure born today is John Elway. Born June 28, 1960 in Port Angeles, Washington. This American 
legendary Denver Broncos quarterback who was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in the year 2004. He was selected first overall by Baltimore Colts in 1983, then traded to the Broncos. He led the Broncos to the Super Bowl victories in 1998 and 1999. Before he was famous, he was a two-sport star in football and baseball at Stanford University, where he earned his degree in economics. He turns 61 years old today. Happy birthday, John Elway! And finally, our last notable figure born today is Elon Musk. Born June 28, 1971, in Pretoria, South Africa. This American engineer who founded PayPal, SpaceX, Tesla Motors, and Neuralink. In January 2021, he was declared the richest person in the world with a net worth of $188 billion. Before he was famous, he received an economics and physics degree from the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania. He turns 50 years old today. Happy birthday, Elon Musk. Happy birthday, everyone! Come along, Discovery Learners, as we explore a new place of the week. This week, we are traveling to somewhere we're all a little familiar with. Home! It's the United States of America. And you hear that song in the background, Discovery Learners? Yes! That's our nation's national anthem. Now, as you give that a listen, let's learn a little bit about the United States flag. Our nation's flag consists of white stars. 50 since July 4th, 1960, on the blue canton with a field of 13 alternating stripes, 7 red and 6 white. The 50 stars stand for the 50 states of the Union, and the 13 stripes stand for the original 13 states. There it is, our flag guys, isn't it beautiful? Now let's go ahead and learn a little more about the USA. The United States of America is a country located in North America. It borders the north of Mexico and the south of Canada. The official name of the USA is the United States of America. Its form of government is a federal republic with two legislative houses, the Senate and the House of Representatives. Its head of state is a president. Our nation's capital is Washington, D.C. The D.C. stands for District of Columbia. Its official language? Well, there isn't any. But the most popular language spoken in America is English, with Spanish a very close second. The most popular religion in the United States is Christianity, including all of its denominations. The main monetary unit of the USA is the US dollar. The current population of the United States is 332,639,000 people. Wow, that's a lot. The USA has a total area of 9,525,067 square miles. Wow, that's a big country. The main exports of the U.S. are food and beverages, crude oil, auto parts, industrial machines, and automobiles. It feels really good to be able to cover our home, the USA. Now be sure to stay tuned all week long as we go ahead and teach you more about the United States of America here on an Ability to Learn. Wow, now that's a really interesting place of the week. Here is the animal of the day. Today's animal is the American bison. Bison is a large mammal that belongs to the family of bovine. Its closest relatives are the African and water buffalo. 
gazelles, and antelopes. In the past, large populations of bison roamed across North American plains, all the way from Mexico to Canada. In the 19th century, when settlers arrived to America, bison were hunted nearly to extinction. The number of bison dropped from 60 million to nearly a few thousand animals. Soon after that period, they were placed under protection, and their numbers managed to increase to around 200,000 animals. Most of those bison are kept on ranches, where people raise them for their meat. Bison is listed as endangered species in the wild. Here are some interesting bison facts. Bison are the largest land animals in North America. Males are larger than females. They can even reach the length of 10 feet, weigh between 900 to 2,000 pounds, and be as high as 6 feet tall. Whoa! Bison has short, curved, and sharp black horns on its head. They reach between 23 and 29 inches in length. Bison has a thick brown coat that provides insulation from the cold and moist weather. It prevents melting of the snow and the soaking of the skin. Pretty neat! The hump on the bison's back is composed of muscles. It facilitates movement through the snow. Bison lives in smaller groups composed of animals of only one gender. But during mating season, these groups will blend together. A group of bison is called a herd a gang, or obscenity. <laughs> How funny. Bison are herbivores, which means plant eaters. It eats grass, twigs, and shrubs. Swallowed food will be regurgitated for an additional chewing before it is transported to the intestines for final digestion. Wow, just like a cow. Although large in size, bison has a couple of natural enemies. Main predators of the bisons are wolves and, of course, humans. Despite its large proportions, bison belong to the group of fast-running animals. It can run up to 40 miles per hour. Wow, that's fast. Also, bisons are able to jump. In fact, they can jump up to 6 feet off the ground. Wow, that's pretty high. Bison gather in large herds during mating season, which usually takes place during the summer. Males tend to fight to gain attention from females. Fights rarely end in serious injuries, but they include horn locking, shoving, and headbutt kicks. When a mama bison gets pregnant, the pregnancy lasts about nine and a half months, and she'll usually give birth to one baby calf. The calves are usually about 33 to 35 pounds at birth with a reddish coat in color. It can stand on its feet right after it's born. Baby depends on mother's milk for the first seven months of its life. At about two months after birth, the calf will develop horns and a hump on its back. Oh, they're cute. An average lifespan of a bison in the wild is between 12 to 20 years. But a bison in captivity can survive up to 30 years. Wow, what a difference. So there you have it, Discovery Learners. We just learned about a new animal. So what do you think of the American bison? To be honest, I thought these were called buffaloes. In fact, buffaloes are a completely different animal altogether. So what do you think? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. So what do you think of today's animal? Is it cute? Is it creepy? Go ahead and let us know what you think in the comment section below. The plant of the day. Today's plant is the buttercup. The buttercup is a type of herbaceous plant. There are nearly 2,000 species of buttercups that mostly inhabit the northern hemisphere. Buttercups are usually found in a cold and temperate regions. They prefer moist habitats and live in fields, meadows, near roads, and in the woodlands, swamps, and bogs. Buttercups are widely distributed and abundant in the wild. Some species of buttercups are rare and endangered due to habitat destruction and introduction of new, invasive plant species. Here are some interesting buttercup facts. Buttercups can grow from 14 to 16 inches in height. Buttercups have cup-shaped flowers 
composed of five petals. Flowers are usually bright yellow colored. Several species of buttercups have orange, red, or white flowers. Buttercups have lustrous flowers thanks to the special layer of reflective cells that are located beneath the superficial cells of the petals. Buttercups usually bloom in April to May. Some species bloom during the summer. Buttercups can easily be recognized by their shiny petals. They also possess a nectar effervescent spot or pool of nectar on the bottom part of the petals. This structure is used to attract insects and to facilitate pollination. Nectar effervescent spot is a unique feature, characteristic to only the buttercups. It means it cannot be found in any other yellow plants. The fruit of the buttercup is called ashne. It belongs to the group of dry and small fruits that contain only one seed. Buttercups can be propagated by parts of the root and the bulb or by a seed. Scientific name of buttercup is the ranunculus, which originates from Latin language. It literally means little frog. This plant is named that way because buttercups often inhabit areas near the water, just like little frogs. Well, that's interesting. All parts of a buttercup is poisonous for cattle and humans. Signs of intoxication appear immediately after ingestion of the plant. They include bloody diarrhea, excessive salvation, colic, and blistering of the intestines. Yikes! You don't want to eat this flower. People used to believe that the rich yellow color of butter originates from the high content of buttercups in cow's diet. This belief is false since cows avoid buttercups due to its high toxicity of these plants. Some types of buttercups are incredibly toxic and even a simple touch of the plant leads to an irritation and blistering of the skin. All toxic chemicals in the buttercups degrade during the process of drying. Hay made of buttercups can be used in the diet of cattle. Even though compounds isolated from buttercups have toxic effects on humans, they can be used in medical purposes for treatment of rheumatism. Buttercups can grow as annual plants, plants that complete their life cycle in one year, or biennial, which means plants that complete their life cycle in two years. Wow, these are pretty flowers, and who knew they were toxic? That's something new. It's that time again. We just learned about a new plant. So go ahead and tell us what you think in the comment section below. The word of the day. Today's word is sensibility. It's a noun. It means the ability to appreciate and respond to complex emotional or aesthetic influences. Sensitivity. Our next word is a word you may have heard somewhere in today's episode. That word is frustration. It is spelled F-R-U-S-T-R-A-T-I-O-N. It's a noun. It means the feeling of being upset or annoyed especially because of an inability to change or achieve something. Frustration. Hola, Discovery Learners. So y'all, do my yesterday Liz. Hi, Discovery Learners. It is I, your teacher, Liz. Aquí es tu palabra en español de la semana. What that means is, here is your Spanish word of the week. Su palabra para esta semana es Julio. 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 Which means July. Julio. July. Julio. July. You can use this word in a phrase. Pocos días más hasta Julio. Pocos días más hasta Julio. Which means just a few more days until July. Pocos días más hasta Julio. Just a few more days until July. Pocos días más hasta Julio. Just a few more days until July. Como se dice July?
En español, julio, which means July. Hasta la semana que viene, Discovery Learners. Be sure to tune in next Monday to learn another Spanish word of the week here on Ability to Learn. Hey, Discovery Learners, back by popular demand, it's me, Andrew, your favorite movie announcer, with a fun list of 4th of July movies to watch this week. First up on the marquee is National Treasure. This film is rated PG and was made in the year 2004. It's an action adventure with a 2 hour and 25 minute runtime. It stars Sean Bean, Harvey Keitel, and one of my favorites, Nicolas Cage, and can be found on Disney+. Plus. Now for one of my favorite animated films, An American Tale. This movie is rated G. It's a musical from the year 1986. It has a 1 hour and 20 minute runtime and stars Christopher Plummer and Dom DeLuise and is available on Hulu. And what's more American than baseball? That's why I've whipped up A League of Their Own. This PG movie comes from the year 1992. It has a 2 hour and 8 minute runtime and it's a sports comedy. It stars Gina Davis, Tom Hanks, Rosie O'Donnell, and Madonna and can be found on HBO Max. With Independence Day right around the corner, I've chosen the perfect cinematic work of art, Captain America The First Avenger. This film is rated PG-13. It's an action adventure film from the year 2011. It has a two hour and four minute runtime. It was directed by Joe Johnston. It stars Sebastian Stan as Bucky, Hugo Weaving as Red Skull, and the amazing Chris Evans as Captain America, and can be found on Disney+. Plus. Captain America The First Avenger This film follows the story of Steve Rogers, a boy from Brooklyn too small and weak to enlist in this man's military to fight against the Nazis in World War II. His best friend Bucky Barnes, however, was, and as a last ditch effort to join his best friend, he attempts to enlist at the Stark Expo. There he meets Dr. Erskine, a German scientist who has joined the Americans to take out the Nazis, as well as the secret forces of Hydra. When Dr. Erskine realizes that Steve is a good man, he helps him become Captain America, using a super soldier serum he created to help balance the scales of good and evil. But like any good comic book hero, he's born out of tragedy. After losing his new friend, Dr. Erskine, as this story unfolds, you are pulled into this comic book world through the use of their song choices and the wonderful filters they use in the film that make it look like a colorized photo from the time period. The only time these filters aren't used is when they're at the Stark Expo, because while the technology is retro future, it's still futuristic in design. This, however, doesn't take you out of the film. They also use montages to perfect effect to help play out the story, and the uses of this montage make the film play out as if you're reading panels right out of a comic book, and never before or since has this been used to bring a comic book just like it leapt out of the pages, making it a cinematic work of art. Now playing at the Discovery Theater this Friday, starting at 1 p.m. Here's your interesting fact. Did you know that Abraham Lincoln, our 16th president of the United States, was a professional wrestler? It's true. Now the great emancipator wasn't quite WWE material, but thanks to his long limbs, he was an accomplished wrestler as a young man. Defeated only once in approximately 300 matches, Lincoln reportedly talked a little smack in the ring. According to Carl Sandburg's biography of Lincoln, Honest Abe once challenged an entire crowd of onlookers after dispatching an opponent. Lincoln's grappling exploits earned him an outstanding American honor in the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. So yeah, our 16th president, Abraham Lincoln, was a professional wrestler. Pretty interesting, huh? Aww, we all know what that song means. 
it means we reached the end of today's episode of Ability to Learn. I had fun, and I hope you had fun too. But not only had fun, I hope you learned something as well. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, or to hit that bell icon so you'll be notified about all the fun we're having at Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day Program. This is Teacher Liz signing out. Farewell, Discovery Learners. I will see you next time.